honestly. I mean, that social, economic, environmental is important. Again, you know, moving on from platitudes. But it has to somewhere connect with the economics of a, of a country. What will happen to growth? What will happen to income distribution? These conversations are happening in parallel, and I think deliberately in parallel. Because the SDGs are taken seriously as a kind of, they're very important as the uh, moderator was saying for awareness, I'm not denying that, and for focusing better on plans and for uh, recognizing interlinkages. But when we're talking about means of implementation, what people want to say is this is a good plan, but we're not going to talk about how it's going to be financed. So for domestic resource mobilization, for example, if I, you were to tell me that the per capita of income of India or Pakistan would grow four times in real terms by 2030, then I'd be able to tell you what my domestic resource mobilization potential is. Then I would have targets, and I would be able to go ahead and prepare a proper, serious, cost-fit financing plan. But this conversation is absent in most uh, SDG uh, discussions. Let us move to technology. Technology is a very interesting area. Now, the $100 billion that, that uh, has been provided for the Global Climate Fund, which is part of the SDG financing, we all know is peanuts for global climate. But even that $100 billion has not come. So let's look at something quite interesting. Uh, I think the SDGs involve us using more renewable energy, right? Everybody agrees? We must all use. Great idea. And we are told that renewable energy costs are going down. Great idea. But tell me something, who, who, who makes renewable energy panels? Five countries in the world. China, Japan, France, Germany, US, plus. Competitively. And what is the revenue they get from these panels in an environment where the cost unit, unit revenue from implementing these panels is going down? The cost of solar energy is going down. The revenue they make is from intellectual property. Just like this iPhone. The revenue is not, the, the total cost of this iPhone is a bit like a perfume bottle now. It is the intellectual property underlying this iPhone that attracts the maximum revenue. And where does that revenue go? Where is that intellectual property, right? It's not in our countries. It's sitting in these same five countries. So basically what you're seeing here, by moving away from talking about hard financing issues, in my view, is an attempt again by rich countries to maintain their position by now shifting from getting returns to straightforward capital, which was the case in the past. They had money, they invested, they got returns, to getting returns from intellectual property. And that is very important in the SDGs. Now, I would be very impressed if the international community would say, this is a real problem, so for Nepal, Bhutan, chalo, forget India. For Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, uh, let us use the Green Climate Fund to make intellectual property free, so that all the investments in the SDGs then become uh, you know, you pay for what you buy, but you don't pay for the intellectual property, for what Microsoft is producing or what Google is producing somewhere in Seattle or somebody else is producing in Germany or in, in Sapporo, right? That conversation is also absent about intellectual property. So when we talk about technology and intellectual property the, and, and the link with finance, it is very important again to note that the serious conversations on intellectual property, finance, are completely absent in SDG space. They're completely absent in G20 space. They're happening only at this time in the sort of bilateral space. So if I, uh, the, what is the way out? I think a very important way out is serious South-South cooperation and the willingness of governments to agree that uh, if we can provide Southern solutions, even if these are temporarily more expensive than what Germany, Japan, the US, et cetera, have to offer us, then governments should agree, it's at least in this region, that these solutions should be financed even by absorbing the higher cost, which would be, I think, temporary. That would be one interesting conversation we could have in this room about what to do. I noticed the next panel is about regional cooperation, about what to do about SDGs in terms of financing and uh, means of implementation. So to conclude, I think the SDGs have many useful purposes. Uh, they're not projectized, yes. I'm still unclear how they're not projectized if, as I was observing in this uh, list, uh, every ministry was speaking to an SDG that is directly relevant to it. I didn't really see the environment ministry talking about education, right? And I didn't see the education ministry talking about environment, but never mind. Let's assume that they're talking somewhere, and therefore there is genuinely a joined up attempt. And if there is genuinely a joined up attempt, then we have the mechanics of SDG delivery right. So the gap is, therefore, in means of implementation, and there I'm telling you there are challenges which go beyond our borders. And those challenges have to do with asymmetric power in the world of finance, Talk merely, and that is why Addis was a failure, merely genuflecting about uh, these matters will not help. 
Uh, I must add in, in closing that we have done our bit in terms of trying to take this issue seriously here in India. India at the moment is the only funder of the taxation task force that the UN has in Geneva, which is an attempt to solve intergovernmental taxation disputes. It is totally opposed by every developing country who would rather see that done elsewhere with the result that it is done nowhere. But we persist in making sure that we keep that at least alive and hope it will get traction one day. So we do need within the UN system more and more of these serious bodies that link the world of finance and the financing of growth to these SDG challenges. Uh, for the very simple reason, again, if you achieve the SDGs and you're not able to answer the question of how this will affect, I'm sorry, it's a very old-fashioned question, the incomes that people have in their pocket by 2030, then this agenda will not be taken seriously. And therefore, I think, yet again, I've been saying this for three years, we need to start putting this kind of panel at the front of a conversation on SDGs and not towards the end of the second day. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rai, uh, for uh, being very eloquent and, of course, uh, keeping within the uh, time limits. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Rai challenge uh, that uh, we uh, can't uh, substitute development assistance uh, with uh, this public-private partnerships or partnerships. And he highlighted very important aspect of uh, intellectual property rights uh, when we talk of technology uh, transfer. Uh, so now we have a, a list of uh, our experts. Uh, my, the first expert on my list is uh, Ambassador Gyan Chandacharya ji, uh, who is the former UN Under Secretary General, currently Chairman of uh, Sauti Center for SDGs uh, in Kathmandu. So of course, with your uh, UN background, you would be in a much better position uh, to tell us that uh, why this discussion on finance is always at uh, the end or in the fine prints, and uh, why not it's uh, uh, something uh, which should be taken upfront. 